Good morning, Pre-K. Are you ready to finish Charlotte's Web? It's our last chapter. I'll miss this book, but yesterday was kind of a, a sad day for us because the fair was over, everyone went home, Charlotte stayed and she, she died at the fair. But Wilbur took her egg sack with all her baby eggs in it. And he carried it all the way home in his mouth. But that was, that's a spider cycle. It was Charlotte's time after she made that sack and filled it with eggs. It was her time to, to go. So even though we will miss her and no one was there when she died, Wilbur has all of her babies. So we're gonna find out in this last chapter how that works out. And it has a great name. It's called A Warm Wind. And I think one time Charlotte mentioned that the warm wind would come. <clears throat> and so Wilbur came home to his beloved manure pile in the barn cellar. His was a strange homecoming. Around his neck he wore a medal of honor and in his mouth he held a sack of spider's eggs. There was no place like home, Wilbur thought, as he placed Charlotte's 514 unborn children carefully in a safe corner. The barn smelled good. His friends, the sheep and the geese, were glad to see him back. The geese gave him a noisy welcome. Congrat you, grat you, grat you, lations, they cried. Nice work. Mr. Zuckerman took the medal from Wilbur's neck and he hung it on a nail over the pig pen where visitors could examine it. Wilbur himself could look at it whenever he wanted to. In the days that followed, he was very happy. He grew to a great size. He was no longer worried about being killed for he knew that Mr. Zuckerman would keep him as long as he lived. Wilbur often thought of Charlotte. A few strands of her old web still hung in the doorway. Every day, Wilbur would stand and look at the torn, empty web and a lump would come to his throat. No one had ever had such a friend. So affectionate, so loyal, and so skillful. The autumn days grew shorter. Lurvy brought the squashes and the pumpkins in from the garden and piled them on the barn floor. The maples and the birches turned bright colors and the wind shook them and they dropped their leaves. Under the wild apple trees in the pasture, the red little apples lay thick on the ground and the sheep gnawed on them and the geese gnawed on them and the foxes came in the night and sniffed them. One evening, just before Christmas, snow began falling. It covered the house and the barns and the field. Wilbur had never seen snow before. When the morning came, he went out and plowed the drifts in his yard for the fun of it. Fern and Avery arrived dragging a sled and they coasted down the lane and out into the frozen pond. Coasting is the most fun there is, says Avery. <clears throat> the most fun there is, retorted Fran, is when the Ferris wheel stops and Henry and I are in the top car. And Henry makes the car swing and we can see everything for miles and miles. Goodness, are you still talking about that old Ferris wheel? Said Avery in disgust. The fair was weeks and weeks ago. Hmm. I think about it all the time, said Fern, picking the snow from her ear. <clears throat> After Christmas, the thermometer dropped to 10 below zero. Cold settled on the world. The pasture was bleak and frozen. The cows stayed in, except on sunny mornings. And when they went out, they stood in the barnyard. The sheep stayed near the barn too for protection. When they were thirsty, they ate snow. The geese hung around the barnyard the way boys hang around a drugstore. And Mr. Zuckerman fed them corn and turnips to keep them cheerful. Many, many, many thanks, they always said when they saw food coming. Templeton moved indoors when winter came. His ratty home under the pig trough was too chilly. So he fixed himself a cozy nest in the barn behind the grain bin. He lined it with bits of dirty newspapers and rags and whenever he found a trinket or a keepsake, he carried it home and stored it there. He continued to w visit Wilbur three times a day, exactly at mealtime, and Wilbur kept the promise he had made. Wilmer, Wilbur let the rat eat first. Then when Templeton couldn't hold another mouthful, 
Wilbur would eat. As a result of overeating, Templeton grew bigger and fatter than any rat you have ever seen. He was gigantic. He was as big as a young woodchuck. The old sheep spoke to him about his size one day. You would live longer, said the old sheep, if you ate less. Who wants to live forever, sneered the rat. I'm naturally a heavy eater. I get untold satisfaction from the pleasures of the feast. And he patted his stomach and grinned at the sheep and crept upstairs to lie down. So here is the world's fattest rat, Mr. Templeton. And there's the sheep trying to tell him he probably should slow down on that a little bit. He really is fat, isn't he? Very greedy rat. All winter, Wilbur watched over Charlotte's egg sack as though he were guarding his own children. He had scooped out a special place in the manure for the sack next to the board fence, and on cold nights he lay so that his breath would keep it warm. For Wilbur, nothing in life was as important as a small object. Nothing else mattered. Patiently, he awaited the end of winter and the coming of the little spiders. Life was always rich and steady when you were waiting for something to happen or hatch. The winter ended at last. I heard the frogs today, said the old sheep. Wilbur stood still and cocked his ears. Springtime, said the old sheep thoughtfully. Another spring as she walked away. Wilbur saw a new lamb following her. The snows melted and ran away and the streams and the ditches bubbled. A sparrow with a streaky breast arrived and sang, and the light strengthened, and the mornings came sooner. Almost every morning there was another new lamb in the sheepfold. The goose was sitting on nine eggs. The sky seemed wider, and warm wind blew. The last remaining strands of Charlotte's old web floated away and vanished. On one sunny morning after breakfast, <coughs> Wilbur stood watching his precious sack. He wasn't thinking of anything much. As he stood there, he noticed something move. He stepped closer, he stared. A tiny spider crawled from the sack. It was no bigger than a grain of sand, no bigger than the head of a pen. Its body was gray with a black stripe underneath. Its legs were gray and tan. It looked just like Charlotte. Wilbur trembled all over when he saw it. The little spider waved at him. Then Wilbur looked more closely. Two more spiders crawled out and waved and they climbed around on the sack, exploring. <clears throat> then three more little spiders, then eight, then 10. Charlotte's children were here at last. Wilbur's heart pounded. He began to squeal. Then he raced in circles, kicking manure in the air. And then he turned a back flip. Then he planted his feet and came to a stop in front of Charlotte's children. Hello there, he said. The first spider said hello, but its small voice was so small, Wilbur couldn't hear it. I'm an old friend of your mother, said Wilbur. I'm so glad to see you. Are you all right? Is everything all right? The little spiders waved their forelegs at him. Wilbur could see by the way they acted that they were glad to see him. Is there anything I can get you? The young spiders just waved. For several days and several nights, they crawled here and there and up and down, waving at Wilbur, trailing tiny drag lines behind them. There were dozens and dozens. Wilbur couldn't count them, but he knew there had, he had a great many new friends. They grew quite rapidly. Soon each one was big as a BB shot. They made tiny webs near the sack. Then came the quiet morning when Mr. Zuckerman opened a door on the north side in a warm draft of rising air flew softly through the barn door of cellar. The wind and the air smelled of damper spruce woods and sweet springtime. Ooh, the baby spiders felt the warm updraft. One spider climbed on top of the fence and then it did something that came as a great surprise to Wilbur. The spider stood on its head, pointed its spinnerets in the air and let loose a cloud of fine silk and the silk formed a balloon. And as Wilbur watched, the spider let go of the fence and it rose into the air. Goodbye, it said, and it sailed through the doorway. <gasps> Wait a minute, screamed Wilbur. Where do you think you're going? But the spider was already out of sight. Then another one called on top of the fence and stood on his head and made a balloon. 
and then another and another, and soon the air was filled with tiny balloons. Wilbur was frantic. Charlotte's babies were disappearing at a great rate. Come back, children, he cried. Goodbye, 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 they called. At last, one little spider took time enough to stop and talk to Wilbur. We're leaving here on the warm updraft. This is our moment of setting forth. We are aeronauts, and we are going into the world to make webs for ourselves. <gasps> but where, asked Wilbur? Hmm. Wherever the wind takes us, high, low, near, far. Are all of you going? Asked Wilbur, you can't all go. I would be left alone with no friends. Your mother wouldn't want that to happen, I'm sure. The air was now so full of balloonists that the barn cellar looked almost as though a mist had gathered. Wilbur watching the first baby balloonist fly off in the air. You can tell he looks very concerned about this and he's crying. Cries of goodbye, goodbye, goodbye came weakly to Wilbur's ears. He couldn't bear to watch anymore. In sorrow he sank to the ground, he closed his eyes. This seemed like the end of the world to be deserted by Charlotte's children. Wilbur cried himself to sleep. When he woke, it was late afternoon. He looked at the egg sack, it was empty. He looked in the air, the balloonists were gone. Then he walked drearily to the doorway where Charlotte's web used to be. He was standing there thinking of her when he heard a small voice. Salutations, it said, I'm up here. So am I, said another tiny voice. So am I, said a third voice. Three of us are staying. We like this place and we like you. Wilbur looked up at the top of the doorway. Three small webs were being constructed. On each web, working busily, was one of Charlotte's daughters. Can I take this to mean, asked Wilbur, that you have definitely decided to live here in the barn cellar and that I'm going to have three friends? You can indeed, said the spiders. What are your names, please? asked Wilbur, trembling with joy. I'll tell you my name, replied the first little spider, if you tell me why you're trembling. Oh, I'm trembling with joy, said Wilbur. Then my name's Joy, said the first spider. Hmm. What was my mother's middle initial? asked the second spider. A, said Wilbur. Then my name is Arnea, said the spider. How about me, asked the third spider. We just pick out a nice sensible name for me, something not too long, not too fancy, and not too dumb. <laughs> Wilbur thought hard. Nellie, he suggested. Fine, I like that very much, said the third spider. You may call me Nellie. And she daintily fastened her oar blind to the next spoke of her web. Wilbur's heart brimmed with happiness. He felt he should make a short speech on this important occasion. Joy, Arnea, Nellie, he began. Welcome to the barn cellar. You've chosen a hallowed doorway from which to string your webs. I think it's only fair to tell you that I was devoted to your mother. I owe my very life to her. She was brilliant, beautiful, and loyal to the end, and I will always treasure her memory. To you, her daughters, I pledge my friendship forever and ever. I pledge mine, said Joy. I do too, said Arnea. And so do I, said Nellie who just managed to catch a small nap. It was a happy day for Wilbur, and more happy, tranquil days followed. As time went on, the months and years came and went. He was never without friends. Fern didn't come regularly to the barn anymore. She was growing up and was careful to avoid childish things like sitting on a milk stool near a pig pen. But Charlotte's children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren Year after year lived in the doorway. Each spring there were new little spiders hatching out to take the place of the old. Most of them sailed away, but always two or three stayed. Mr. Zuckerman took fine care of Wilbur all the rest of his days, and the pig was often visited by friends and admirers, for nobody ever forgot the year of his triumph in the miracle of the web. Life in the barn was very good night and day, winter and summer, spring and fall. It was the best place to be, thought Wilbur, this warm, delicious cellar, with the garrulous geese and the changing seasons, the heat of the sun, 
the nearness of rats, the sameness of sheep, the love of spiders and the smell of manure and the glory of everything. Wilbur never forgot Charlotte, although he loved her children and grandchildren dearly. None of the new spiders ever quite took her place in his heart. She was in a class by herself. It's not often that someone comes along who was a true friend and a good writer. Charlotte was both. The end. We did it. We finished Charlotte's Web. One of the great stories of all time. I hope you, if you get a chance, you can watch the movie. It's pretty good too. I think the book's the best, but I don't know. Here's one last picture of Charlotte's three daughters in the doorway building their webs and Wilbur watching them. And that was nice that that circle of life continued for Wilbur and he always had friends. Okay, so now that we've finished our story, we always have something special. You will have to wait till you come back to school, but there will be a prize for this story. And that prize is Wilbur. Everybody, can you see it, is going to get their own little Wilbur to keep. Through the years, some of the children have taken a shoe box or a box and built a barn for Wilbur and fixed it all up. You can do whatever with your Wilbur, but you will all get one when we come back to school. So thank you for joining me on this great adventure through a great book. There'll be another one that we'll read soon. I think probably the rest of the week we'll just pick some fun books to read and then we'll start something special next week. I'm not sure yet what it's going to be, but I'm sure it'll be something you like because there's so many good books out there. All right, so have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow.